Sometimes in life, we really just want things to be easy, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that includes cooking, baking, and making ice cream. And today on WTF, we're going to look at Fabri Deli Paste and their entire line of products, and how you can take one product and make two different things, like gelato and creme brulee. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Garrett. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. So if you're new to WTF, every week here we're going to cover unique ingredients and techniques and show you how to use them, demo some cool recipes, and get you started on your culinary journey. So remember, if you like what you see, you have to subscribe and ring the bell, and you get notified of our content that does come out every single Tuesday. So now this week we're going to be talking about um, a line that we carry here in Modernist Pantry. We imported from Italy and it's called the Fabri line. And it's a really great line because it's really versatile in terms of you know what you can do with it. But I'm going to let Scott get into that because uh, he's definitely played around a lot with it over the last couple of weeks. So I think he has a lot to talk about. Yeah, so we've, we've messed around with this line a lot. They have some really great products and they do some really great things. And you can pretty much add them to any of your your pastry or baking and cakes, anything that you want. Even uh, like we're going to show off today, two different types of custard that use the same one, but you can do them differently. Mm -hmm. So with the deli paste, we have the flavorings pretty much, the, the add-ins. So we have something like uh, caramel, chocolate, coconut, but also fruit flavors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, raspberry, cherry, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we also have the cherries here on the, this side of the table which we've added into our uh, Baked Alaska that we actually did yep. a few weeks ago mm -hmm. on our New Year's Eve episode. Mm -hmm. uh, so these cherries are really amazing, the uh, Amarena cherries. Uh, they're, I find they're much better than like a Luxardo cherry, just the flavor so intense, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we add them to a lot of our different you know, uh, pastries that we make. But we're gonna show two recipes today that will use uh, the caramel, and we're gonna show it two different ways, but. You could take these recipes and you could sub out any of the deli paste and make uh, these recipes, you know, with any flavor that you want. So, yeah. So, Scott, from kind of, um, you know, either a home chef perspective or you're running like your own baking business or gelato business, what would be the benefit to using like a Fabri deli paste versus uh, starting from, you know, scratch? So, so these are always going to be completely consistent across the board. Every time you get them, they're going to taste the same, and they're also going to make your products the same. So if you use, let's say, strawberries at this time of the year, right here, right now, it is winter for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, if you're using fresh strawberries, they're not going to be the best unless you, you know, mm -hmm. have them overnighted from across the world and in your spending a lot of money on that, but if you were to use you know, a deli paste that is a fruit base, let's just say the cherries, you're going to get them s super consistent every single time, your recipe is not going to change, and you need a very small amount because they're so intense in flavor. Okay, and in terms of, you know, I, I think on our website, we haven't done an exact count, but there's about like 15 to 20 different flavors. That's a pretty big <laughs> spectrum. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we everything, like, like we said, from the coconut chocolate caramels that we have here uh, to fruit flavors and even like... Uh, uh, Jinduya and uh, pistachio, Ooh. like all sorts of different exotic flavors that you can add and you know replace in different recipes and make them new. Right. And what um, you know, when people are thinking about flavoring, sometimes they they're thinking like really artificial. They're thinking like, oh, it's going to taste like medicinal, medis <laughs> medicinal, medicinal <laughs> cherries. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like what you know, having worked with a few of these different flavors over the last few weeks, how would you describe them? So I find them to be very uh, fresh and really vibrant. Okay. Uh, and one thing that they do have, you know, on the back of the package, you'll see, oh, well, they have citric acid or they have this. Mm -hmm. And mostly those are used just as preservation and, you know, for color or anything like that. But all the flavor is really coming from the fruit or whatever it is that this is flavored by. Okay. So it is extremely natural and the flavor is so intense and so beautiful. Like we're going to see here, using such a small amount to you know, flavor an entire gelato that we're going to make. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes about two ounces to flavor an entire gelato uh, intensely with like, caramel. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. So cool, we're gonna show, we have some uh, warm cream and milk here, and I'm just gonna add this in. Well, we did this a little bit differently than we did on our Instagram because we have, uh, you know, for demonstration purposes here. So I'm just gonna show you the, the warm cream and milk. I'm gonna add in our Fabric Deli paste, and you'll be able to see this. And what overhead. flavor are you adding? So this is the caramel. So okay. we get caramel for both the 
uh, creme brulee, which we have here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Mm -hmm. And this is the gelato base. So we have some of that. And then we also took a, uh, this is bourbon that has been infused with coffee beans. And we did Ooh. that a few weeks ago mm -hmm. for a recipe. And we're actually going to add that in, which makes for a really delicious flavor. Yeah, that was the, um, the the Irish cream episode, yes, so was. you can find that in the link in the description below. So I have my eggs here, and I'm just going to temper in the warm cream and milk, but I'm just going to add my salt to my eggs, because the salt's going to help bring out any flavors that there are in there. Mm -hmm. And then this is our perfect gelato that we have. And the perfect gelato is just a mix of ingredients that's going to make for a perfectly like scoopable, uh, textured gelato. Uh, if you are familiar with making you know gelatos as opposed to ice creams this is going to be uh, a bit more dense rather than the airy ice cream and this mm -hmm. uh, ingredient helps a lot with that you can check one of our first episodes which is our uh, ice cream ice cream stabilizer. stabilizers yep mm -hmm. so I have this here mm -hmm. and the reason why we add the sugar directly to our eggs is that it's going to raise the uh, coagulation temperature okay. of the eggs themselves or the egg yolks mm -hmm. I'm just gonna Move this over, very simple. Mix this in. This is going to be a nice tight egg mixture. Mm. There we go. And the heat from the, uh, the cream and the milk here will help loosen this up. So I'm just going to pull this in. All right. I'm just going to mix this in very simply, and you can see how it maintains the color mm -hmm. and keeps it really beautiful. And when you're using the deli paste, are you always adding it to the liquid, or are you... Um, no, you, you can know. do different things that you, you want. Okay. So let's just say you're adding it to uh, a cake. You can add it either into the, to the buttercream, you can add it to the cake itself, mm. or you can you know, drizzle it in between the layers and really find out what works best for you. So with this, I like to add it to the cream just because the, you know, the heat's going to make it mix in very easily. And, and do you find, you know, I know with this particular one being caramel, do you find it's um, about the same thickness as like a regular caramel, a little thicker, a little lighter? It's actually a little bit thinner, which okay. makes it easier to mix in. And it's extremely dark. You saw the color and there's some still left in the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. The color of that's extremely dark. So it's caramelized sugars that are intensified, they're not to the point where they taste burnt or anything, Okay. Uh, but you're able to take this and mix it in. If you were to do a regular caramel that is not um, as thin as this, it's going to be very hard to mix it in, right. and you're going to need a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to finish mixing this in here, and very simply... I'm going to grab that. I forgot to grab this. Yeah. Mm. There we go. So I'll just move this off to the side. And after we churn our gelato, we like to do layers. So we scoop a few layers. We drizzle in some more of the, uh, the caramel del deli paste. And mm. then we just keep layering, layering, layering. And then we run a, um, just like a toothpick through it, mm -hmm. a skewer through it, so we can have this really great... Um, and you can see it's only been out of the the refrigerator Thank for you. about 10 minutes, but it's beautifully scoopable, and you can try it, Janie. Okay. So you can just churn it with whatever means you want, and you don't have to um, mm. you don't have to mix it in in the the ice cream churn, or let's say you're using a Paco Jet, you can just take it out and mix it right in. That perfect gelato helps and allows mm -hmm. you to have like that nice perfect uh, texture, and then you can. Place it, freeze it, and it'll be perfectly scoopable. Yeah, the texture on this is great, and I really love the uh, the combination of that. You get that little coffee bourbon flavor mm -hmm. in there along with the caramel. So it's very caramelly, but it's also, you know, I, I think you know it's important when like, when we decide to carry something that it tastes really good. Yeah. So this tastes like it tastes like you know it tastes like caramel, but but I know that with like. It's usually with the cherry that I hate the way the artificially flavored cherry yeah. taste. Yeah, and not the but cherries that are made by the deli paste. Yeah. But yeah, I know that artificial, that yeah. fake cherry flavor, that fake grape flavor, like things like that just taste like, you know, kids' medicine. And this is not what these taste like yeah. at all. And we did the, um, was it a mini baked Alaska a few yeah. weeks ago? That one had the cherries in it, right? Yes, it does. It was so good. It like, it tasted like you 
pureed and squeezed out all the cherry flavors yourself. And you pretty much did, especially mm -hmm. with, with these, because it's just, it is cherry. When you take it out, you notice that it is cherry pulp. It's not just like this thin goo that looks like cherries. It is actually cherry pulp that's in there. So right. you make some really great things with it. And like you said, mousse, you can make it a mousse out of this, cakes, whatever you want. So the next thing that we did is we basically made uh, a different custard. This is a baked custard mm -hmm. rather than a, a stirred custard that turns into a gelato. Uh, and this is a creme brulee. Very simple creme brulee recipe. Then I added two tablespoons of the, uh, the deli paste, the Fabry deli paste, mm -hmm. and I was able to make a very simple caramel creme brulee, which is just kind of intensifying the caramel that's on top of it as, mm -hmm. as well. So makes for a really great uh, dessert. This is my wife's mm -hmm. favorite dessert. She loves creme brulee. It's one of those Ooh. things have to make every uh, every year. Sweet. And she just had a second baby, so she deserves extra creme I did. Brulee. I made some. I, the first time I, I mm. made these, I brought them all home. Mmm. It is really nice. Yeah. You really get that caramel flavor very evenly mm -hmm. all the way through. Yeah, so I want to try two. You can't have all the fun, Jamie. All right. You can have that one all to yourself. Mm. That one's for pictures. Mm. Mm. So this good, so you excellent. get that caramel. It's not overly intense because the way we use it, we want to just have the you know perfect across the board caramel flavor. And we find that this is a really great recipe, but if you wanted to change it out, do whatever flavor you want, you mm -hmm. absolutely could do that. And these are just two base recipes that you can take, make them your own. And I think usually the follow-up question that we get is, well, how much do I use? And it's, it's hard with flavorings, but can you, yeah. can you give some guidelines around, around so that? So that's the thing is everything's to taste. So mm -hmm. what you like will be different than what I like from what you like mm -hmm. or anything. So, you know, you and I will probably put the different amounts of salt on something. So that's mm -hmm. what this is like is you should put a little bit in. I'll always start with less because you can always add more. You can't take away. It's a basic chef rule. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get these, put a little bit in. There's no exact ratio. There's no exact you know, percentage that you have to use. It's, you know, do it to your, your flavorings, your taste, uh, and always test it on someone else because you want to find it, you know, right in that perfect uh, middle point where so everyone's going to like it, so. Yeah, and what I think is really great about this particular product is that you're right, a little bit does go a long way. That You said for two ounces, you get, you made, you know, an entire batch of gelato. Yeah, this is a quart of, uh, of ice cream for two ounces, so. Yeah, and then I think each one of I think the flavors are all a little bit different, but most of them will come in these like 1.5 kilo mm -hmm. jars and 1.5 kilos is about what, four pounds? So, uh, my, my about three, trying three to multiply pounds. it by 2.2. So a uh, little over three pounds, yep, little right? Little so yep. that's many, many, many servings of gelato and creme brulee and cakes and oh, yeah. pastries and basically anything else that you can possibly want to put this in. So it's really versatile that way. And it has a pretty long shelf life, so you can have it for a really long time as yep. well. So, do you want to talk about, do we already talk about the cherries? We did talk about the cherries. Okay. We pretty much covered it all, but there's so many different flavors that you can just go on uh, our site. You can check out the flavors and see which ones that you would like. So that's kind of what we did. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go with something a little bit um, simple so we can try some really, you know, unique recipes out of it. But then you guys can go do what you do. You make your own recipes. You send them to us. We love it. So always tag us at Modernist Pantry, and you can uh, show us what you make with these awesome ingredients. Mm -hmm. And as always, all the recipes featured today will be in the links in the description below, yes. and you can get everything from our website, modernistpantry.com. So from here in the Modernist Pantry test kitchen, I think I've said Modernist Pantry enough times today. I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. <laughs>